One of the tools we'll be using in this class quite a bit is App Inventor, which is a website and software that lets you make apps for Android devices. Uh, to get started with App Inventor, you need to load the page, which is at appinventor.mit.edu. And once you uh, once you get going with App Inventor a lot, it'll be pretty easy to load. Just appinventor.mit.edu. On the App Inventor homepage, you can see some projects and news about App Inventor, but you'll want to click the button on the top right called Create. Loading App Inventor will give you a current update on the status of, this, of the service. It may give you a survey to take. You can just dismiss this with Continue. And if you have been working in a project, that project will automatically load. But you will probably be taken to the projects list if you've not used App Inventor before. Now, something that may pop up before you even get to this screen is a sign-in screen. You'll sign in using any Google account. So if you have a Gmail or if your school uses Google applications, uh, you'd sign in with that. All the work that you do in App Inventor is automatically saved into your Google account. So it's, it's there wherever you go, and it, you, you'll never lose it. Um, so when you sign into App Inventor for the first time, it'll take you to the My Projects list, which looks like this, and any project that you have in there uh, will be will be listed. To get going, though, in App Inventor, you click Start New Project, which is the button in the top left. Then you have to name your project. Project names must be all one word. They have to start with a letter, and they can contain upper and lowercase letters and um, numbers. So I'm going to call this like my first app. I did not put any spaces in it. Uh, I like to use uppercase letters at the beginning of each word to make my app names a little more readable. So name your app and click OK. And then be patient. Sometimes it takes a minute for these to load. You'll see on the screen the App Inventor design view. On the left hand side is the palette. And the palette contains all the pieces you can add to your app. In the center is the viewer, which shows you kind of what your app might look like if you run it on a device or on, on an emulator. So you can run these on, on a real device, like a phone or a tablet, or you can run these apps, if you don't have an Android phone or tablet, on a piece of software that's built in called an emulator, which pretends to be a phone on your screen. It has some limitations, though, like you can't shake the emulator. You can only shake a real phone. Um, sometimes the emulator doesn't know its GPS coordinates, but a real device would. So there's some limitations to the, to the emulator, but it'll, it'll be pretty, pretty useful for you. On the right-hand side, we can see two columns, Components, which uh, right now the only component we have is our screen. We'll be adding components to that screen. And then on the far right are the properties of the thing we have selected. So the component we have selected is screen one. And in the properties column, we see the properties of screen one. So what I want you to do right now is go ahead and make your My First App you have not already. Get to this screen where in the top left it says My First App. You have your screen here and you have your properties. Then, if you need to, pause the video. Then, change the background color of your screen one to any color you, you like knowing that the text that you're going to put on here is going to be black, so you probably want to have something that's lighter in, in color. And the way you do that is you make sure screen one is highlighted, and under properties you come down to background color, and then you click this little color chip, and you can choose any color you want. So I'm going to go with uh, a green color. Ooh, that hurts my face. Um, how about maybe a nice blue? We can we can talk about how to make more colors than just these, these, these handful of, of built-in colors. We can make any one of 16.7 million colors using App Inventor. You can also put an image in the background, so if you had a graphic you wanted to upload, you could put that in the background as well. But you can't have a background color and a background image at the same time. So get your get your app up to speed with, with a color that you like, maybe a school color. Um, and then we're going to, to add your name to this app. So back over here on the left hand side, find the part that says label and drag your label over onto your screen one and then drop it. And you'll notice that we see here text for label one on your color and also in the components list on the right label one is now highlighted. So we had screen one and label one. And if you switch between the two you can see the properties change because the properties of a screen differ from the properties of a label. What I want to do is change the words that appear on this label and change the size of those words.
So I can change the words that appear by finding the text area down here where it says properties for label one text. I'm going to put my name, which is Mr. Moix. And I would like you to choose whatever you feel is appropriate for your app, probably your name. And I'm going to also change the size. Now this is the same font size that we'd use in a word processor. So um, I'm going to go with like a 44 font because my name is pretty short and 44 will, will make it great big on the screen. If you have a longer name, you might need to go 33 or something like that. So now you have an app that has your name and a color of your choice. You can also change the font. Uh, there aren't many fonts available in, in App Inventor though. So you can change the font to to one of these these few fonts available there. I'm going to go with that one, Mr. Moigs. Now if you wanted to add a photo of yourself, you would need to have a photo. Uh, we're, we're definitely going to use photos in these apps a little bit later. Um, so let's not worry about that now. What I would like us to do though is to maybe add a button. So top left here where it says button, drag that button over and this is going to be something we can interact with. Um, what I want what I want this to do um, is say push me. So I can change the text for my button one the same way I changed my text for my label. So I'm going to pause here for just a moment and let you figure out how to change the text for button one to say push me. So what you should have done is made sure that your button one was highlighted and you can highlight it in the viewer over here or you can highlight it in the components list which I prefer over here and then in the properties you go down until you find the text and then you change the text to say push me but it doesn't change automatically it changes only when you click outside that text box and there we go so now we have our name we have a button that says push me you can change other properties including the size of the button the font face of the text on it the font size I'm gonna make that one 55 and see if we get a big push me button. Well, the words are bigger, but the height of the button is not big enough. So we can we can work on that later. This is our first app. We'll we'll put that back at 14. Now, how do we get this app to go? So if you have an Android device, you can install something called the AI2 Companion. Let's see what what that looks like. AI2 Companion. You'll find it in the Google Play Store and it looks like this and it lets you connect your Android device to the App Inventor using uh, some codes but what if you don't have an Android device? Well, The easy answer is you go here to connect and then you pick emulator now if you're on Mac it's going to start the emulator right up if you're on Windows it's going to say hey you need to launch the AI starter program that's easy that's installed over here start all programs MIT App Inventor Tools AI Starter. Now you don't see anything except for this little Android peeking up from the taskbar, but now you're good to go. Connect Emulator. And it's going to go through a process of starting up this this uh, this Android phone. It's important that you kind of sit back and allow this process to complete all by itself without interacting with the device at all. So it looks like an old uh, Android phone that you might buy on a prepaid network, but you don't want to slide to unlock, you don't want to do any of that. Just kind of sit back and wait and let Android do its thing. If you are doing this for the first time, it's going to pop up with an out of date message with instructions on how to update the, um, the, the emulator. Your on-site teacher will have have the instructions will know how to help you do that. It's essential that if the emulator tells you you need to update, then you actually must update because the apps won't work otherwise. Mine has already been updated, so if we watch it says emulator started, waiting to ensure all is running. Now it's going to automatically unlock itself and start the MIT Companion, which is that software that I showed you you could download on your device. Um, once it gets the companion open, it's going to connect my app up and you should see on the emulator something similar to what the design view showed me in App Inventor. Alright, there's my app. Don't know why that is there. Alright, so this is this is an emulator. It's a piece of software that thinks it's a smartphone. And so it buttons react the way buttons react. Um, one of the nice things I think about about App Inventor is if I change the property of something 
like if I change the property of screen one here. Let me um, restore this and see if I can get the the emulator on the same screen as the App Inventor. Your emulator is this Android down here, the, the, the little guy standing up. So over here, let's see if we can get our emulator and our App Inventor working together. So if I were to change a property like my screen background, so screen one's background color, if I change that to that, that eye popping green, you should see that change take effect over here in the emulator without really pushing any other buttons. It takes a second. And the same thing holds true. If you're developing this on your own device, then it's, it's, it's going to... Um, if you're developing this on your own device, it's it's going to change as well without having to reconnect. Now, I don't know. What do we want to do when we push the button? We can we can make it say things, we can make these words change, we can make the colors change. Let's just go exploring and see what we can do. So the the way you put behavior in an app is in the blocks editor. So we've been in the designer. If you look in the top right hand corner next to your username, you'll see the blocks editor. So if you click the word blocks, it's going to take you to this wide empty screen. You haven't lost your work. It's over here in the design view. Don't worry. But in the blocks, we are, we're adding behaviors to our app. And behaviors are tied to pieces of, of the, the components we dragged in. So we see here we have screen one, label one, and button one. And if we go exploring through each one of these, you can see things that it can do and things that it knows about um, itself. So we added a button. The easiest thing to do with a button is to handle a click event. We can say when button one is clicked, then let's do something. We can change the properties of the label. We can change the properties of the screen. We can even change the properties of the button itself. So let's see what we can do with screen one's background color. Screen one, background color. Now we have two of these blocks, screen one background color with the pokey thing and then a screen one dot background color within anything. So th this one is called a setter. Set screen one's background color two. That's a setter. And this other one with the pokey thing, it, we refer to it as a uh, getter. So this is go go get screen one's background color and let's talk about it. Okay, so I'm gonna throw that block away. You drag these blocks around, you can throw them in the trash can, you snap them together. You see if you can hear that. Yep, so now we know those are snapped together, but we have this little triangle. This triangle says, uh, hey, you, you can't run this app because there's nothing plugged in there. Uh, I think you can actually click that triangle and it'll tell you specifically. Error from companion, uh, invalid syntax. So that's this is this is scary Java stuff. Don't worry about that. It, what, what it's telling us is there's nothing plugged into that hole. Well, there's some built-in components of App Inventor that are not tied to any particular parts. And one of them is color. And we can make a color by using numbers. And the, the minimum number is 0, and the maximum number is 255. So let's experiment with this. This says, when button 1 is clicked, set screen 1's background color to a color of these three values. Push it and see what happens. So OK. So when this one is 255 and the other two are 0, that means red. I'm going to pause here, and I want you to make this block and see if you can turn your app's background color red just like this. Once you got the app uh, able to turn the background color red, let's rearrange these numbers and see what happens. What if I make that one, the middle one, 255, and just push my button? There's my ugly green. If I make the last one 255, Any guesses? Yep, it's blue. So red, green, and blue are the three colors that we can use to make. The minimum amount is zero, the maximum amount is 255. So what if I turn all the blue on and all the red on? So we should expect that to be some kind of purpley color. What if I turn all the red off, all the green off, and all the blue off? if all the lights are off, it's black. Similarly, if I make all of these turned on, 255, 255, and 255, then that's going to make the background white. And you can explore anywhere in between. And you can actually go on the web and go like RGB colors, 
color, well, if I could spell colors, yep, RGB colors. And um, just click around and they'll, there'll be charts and go, ooh, I really like that color right there. I think I want to use that one. What, what is it? It's 112, 219, and 147. 112, 219, and 147. And now I can make my app with that color, whatever color that is. So you can you can absolutely use numbers to make uh, colors, but I think one one bit of more fun is to give the app a little bit of its own intelligence and its own uh, ability to to choose. So under the math built in, I'm going to go find a random integer and plug that in and say, give me a random number between, and we know that zero is the smallest. We know that 255 is the biggest. So I can choose a random color by choosing a random red. And now if I right click on a, on a group of blocks and say duplicate, I can get a copy of that and say pick a random red, pick a random green, and pick a random blue. Now when I push the button, every time I get a completely random color. So this is just a brief walkthrough of App Inventor. The behaviors are wired up in the Blocks Editor. The, uh, the, the, the layout is created in the Designer. And you use an emulator or a device to run the app to actually make it go. Because this, this doesn't do anything over here. This is just the, the, the layout over here in the emulators where the behavior happens. Well, this is this is this is the tool that we're going to be using to do some of our programming assignments. If you have any questions, feel free to email me, contact me, or definitely check with your on-site teacher, and uh, we will get you up and running if you have any problems.